Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to start a new series called my 101 series and it's going to be um, demonstrations of tools and certain DIY home improvement um, things from a, for a beginner. I'm going to base it towards a beginning user who may have never seen the tool before, never used a drill, never used um, an angle grinder or, or any kind of a tool like that. And um, I, so I'm, I'm going to be talking at that level. Uh, some t because where I come from, I've been doing this stuff my whole life, and I do it every day, day in, day out. And looking at some of the videos, I realize maybe I'm talking with terms at, at a different level than a beginning user. And I don't mean that in any disrespect for anybody watching the videos. Uh, the way I would best explain it is if you went to your doctors, you know, a doctor has to talk to you in terms that you understand, not what another doctor and him would, uh, talk you know to each other about they, they would have you know the doctor has a bedside way that he talks to you he, he talks to you in terms that you can understand that's what I'm trying to do here is, is bring it down to a level that somebody who's never used it before would understand what I'm talking about so that's the idea behind this series um, and I'm gonna label these videos as I do them I'll put a one-on-one -on, -one on them so if you're a more experienced user and it's not your cup of tea then just uh, you know you can pass over these ones but anyways I just this is something I want to do and uh, I'd appreciate your feedback on it if there's something that during the video you don't understand something I said or there's something you would like to see me um, expand more on please post a comment and let me know and uh, if I look like I'm a little cold and I'm shivering I'm doing these out in my shop and right now it's in Cleveland and uh, it's probably we're in February and it's probably around 10 degrees out right now and I thought it was gonna be a little warmer out here and it's not so I'm going to get this done as best I can, but if I shiver a little bit, that's what's going on. All right, so first things first, if uh, you've never used a drill before and you get your drill brand new out of the box, and I'm going to start going over a cordless drill. Um, first thing I want you to do is charge it completely. Before you do anything else, charge it up. Now, there's a couple different styles you might have. They have... Some drills have a removable battery pack. Basically, on this one, I squeeze both sides of it. Battery pack pulls out, and it has a charging unit that it'll clip into. Grab one here. This is the charging unit for that drill. It would slide into there, and then a light kicks on, indicating that the drill is going to need to be being charged. That one was a little tight. This drill here is actually one of my favorite drills. It's called a pocket driver. It's small. It's a 12 volt series, and uh, it, it doesn't weigh a lot, so I like having this drill. I use this a lot at work, so I'm very comfortable with this one. Um, and again, this drill style here has the uh, built-in battery to it, whereas this one has the cartridge. So if, depending on what style you got, say you got one that's a built-in style, when you open up the box, there's going to be a charger for that drill. If you're not sure about something, the owner's manuals always put how to charge the drill, the battery information, all that, usually in the first few pages of the owner's manual. So just open it up, look to that section, and you'll see you know, how they tell you to do it. But I, I want you to guys do this first. Make sure your battery, whether it's a built-in battery or removable battery pack, that it's fully charged before you do anything else with it. So now we're gonna pretend that we've got this battery fully charged and you're about to use your drill to do some uh, home improvements around your house. First thing you need to know about your drill is how do I get power to it? And that's on your on off or your trigger, which is here in the front. Most drills will have a variable speed trigger. So what that means is the harder I pull the trigger, the faster the chuck spins. So I'm gonna pull the trigger. And we see that chuck spinning really fast. If I go a little bit slower with it, and I just pull a more gentle, it starts to do a slow, slow spin, and then as I squeeze harder and harder, it goes faster. Now, the other part of the drill, which I already talked about here, is the chuck, which is the front part of the drill. This is what you're going to put your bits into. Now, a chuck is made up basically, these are called a keyless chuck, and they're designed to be tightened by hand. The older style drills have what's called a key chuck. And you may actually they still sell these and you may have them. So I actually have one here just to show you guys for demonstration purposes. This is a heavy duty Bosch hammer drill. It's got a key chuck on it. 
And I'm going to come in closer here so you guys can see this. Are we in on it? Okay. So basically you have right here, you have these three things right here. These are called your jaws. And your jaws move in and out. And they tighten on the bit, whatever style bit you put in here. And they open up to allow for a wider bit and tighten up for a smaller bit. And they clamp on it. The key would fit into, there's holes on the side here, and you have these teeth right here, and the key has the, the opposite of it. So you have the female hole here, you have the male right there, and you have the female teeth, the male teeth right there, it just slides in. And as I turn the key, whichever way I go, it tightens or loosens the chuck. That was a key chuck. So as you can see, it took a little bit to do. The upside of a key chuck is you could get a nice amount of pressure on it so it would really hold the item that you had in there, whatever kind of bit, key chucks will hold a bit tighter and they're, they're not as prone to loosening up on a bit. But since they take a lot of time, they invented the keyless chucks, which you do by hand. The same thing I was doing a key, basically you just turn this part of the chuck here and as you, as you turn it one way, it tightens it. If, if you turn it in my way, I'm looking at it, I'm turning it clockwise. clockwise Clockwise will loosen it up, counterclockwise will tighten it up. So if you're standing sitting behind your drill, how you would be holding it, that should be the same for pretty much every drill. I don't think they invert that. So, it, so we have our chuck in front. We have the three jaws in front. And these are self-centering. There's three of them right there. So as I tighten it up, whatever I have in there, they will bring it to the center of this chuck. So they're, they're called a self-centering drill chuck and or with the jaws. Now the next thing behind the chuck, we, the, most drills will have this, there's a bunch of numbers and a picture of a drill bit. And what that is, is that's to change our torque setting. Now torque is when uh, is the turning force that I'm applying to something. So the more torque I have, the more power I have behind what I'm turning. So if I turn this to like a number one setting, that's, that's a, it's a little bit of turning pressure behind it. And if I'm going to hold on to this chuck here and show you. Do you hear that ticking noise? What that is, is that's the, I have a low torque setting. So once it hits a limited amount of torque, it, it disengages the drill and it, it's like a clutch and it disengages the drill so it's not continuing to turn. The reason why you would want that is if you were drilling into, say, a soft wood or you were putting like cabinet hinges up or something like that, if you were screwing in and you had a high torque on there, it could literally put the bit into the wood and be still be spinning it and literally strip the bit out before you had time to release the trigger. It could go in there on a high torque setting. It could do that. So that's what they that's why they put this there. And you can adjust this to whatever torque is needed. And I can go into this in more depth later. Behind this, we have a high torque, low torque switch or a high speed, low speed setting. If you're in high speed, you're low torque. If you're in low speed, you're high torque. And the, the point behind it is the high speed is geared to spin really fast. That's for usually for a drilling operation. The low torque spins at a slower speed, but it has more power behind that twist, so more torque to it. So that, just so you guys don't get confused about that. Um, some of them will actually spell it out up here. They'll put high torque, low torque. Other ones will say high speed, low speed, or they'll say one and two, just depending on what you've got going on. So parts covered, just to recap, we've got our chuck, we've got our torque setting, we've got our speed or high low torque setting up here. Next thing you're going to see is this button here on the side. And this is our forward reverse button. So a lot of times it will be in the center, which is like in a neutral position. If it is, when you pull the trigger, it won't engage. And I've had people before they'll say something, well, I picked my drill up and it didn't work. Well, it is working. It's just not, you, you haven't told the drill whether you want it to go forward or reverse yet. So if you just tap the button one way or the other, it'll begin to spin. So if you do pick up your drill and your trigger is not going in, the drill is not broken, more likely you just have it engaged forward or reverse. Below that is the variable you variable speed trigger which we've covered and those are basically the working parts of the drill now I'm going to do a quick demo here and chuck up a bit so you can see it so I'm going to loosen this up I'm actually going to spin over to this one here so I'm going to put a drill bit in here this is just a standard this one's 5 16 that means the diameter of the bit across is a 5 16 bit You'll see this sometimes when you're, um, if you're doing a project around the house and you want to um, drill a hole for an anchor, they'll spell out the size. So a lot of anchors, they may call for a 3 16 bit. You want to stick with that bit size. Don't try and play around with other bits because um, it those anchors are engineered 
for that anchor to go in that size of a hole and to hold in that size of a hole. And so you don't want to impact the holding power of an anchor by changing a bit size. So uh, what I would recommend doing if you're going to start doing some DIY around the house is to get yourself a bit set, something like this. I picked this one up at uh, Home Depot. This is a Milwaukee bit set. Um, this You don't need to have... 50 million bits. A small bit set works great. You can buy the cheaper sets and those work fine too. A lot of times what you'll see is you'll see a set for you know 15 bucks and it's got 42 bits and you'll see another set for 20 bucks and it's got like 15 bits. So you think well I'm better off buying the more bits. Not necessarily because the cheaper bits sometimes are made with a lower grade material and they don't hold their cutting edges as well and um, some of them are more designed just to drill into wood, whereas some of the higher end ones are designed to handle wood, plastics, and metals. And you, and if you're going to be looking for an all-around bit, I would definitely look for a little bit higher end bit and something that's designed to cut into those three materials. And also what is nice is like on these Milwaukee's is they have, they have different marketing terms used, but this one calls it a 135 degree split point bit. And what that means is at the tip of the drill bit, They've got it, ang it's designed for an easy start so the bit doesn't walk on you. And by walking, what I mean is when you have a bit in a drill and you're going to drill into something, if that bit would start to bounce around, they call that walking, and that's because the bit didn't engage properly. So we're going to do a quick, I'm going to chuck this up and I'm going to drill a quick hole into some wood here so you can kind of see that. And then I'm also going to unchuck it and I'm going to load up a... Um, a screw head to it and show you how I use the drill to screw screws into it and also like a sheet metal screw I'm going to screw one of those in as well too so we're going to do this real quick here so basically I'm going to set these off the side I'm going to take this and put the bit in the chuck and I'm going to turn it to tighten it and I'm just going to give it a little bit more snug with my hand so now it's nice and snug we're spinning in a forward fashion. So here I have a piece of wood. I, I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. If you think about this, it could be a wall or anything you're drilling into for anything you got to anchor. I would have my mark already laid out what I had to drill. So I would take the pit, the point of my drill bit, and set it up against my mark. And a good idea is to keep two hands on whatever it is that you're drilling with because sometimes these things have enough torque they can twist your hands. So until you get comfortable using them, I like to keep two hands on it. So I've got my mark. Now I'm going to start slow. Don't, don't just try and do a drill thing and come in at 900 miles an hour because what's going to happen is you're going to bounce all over the place. So we, we got ourselves lined up. We're going to just kind of slowly use that variable to get it started. Now you can see already it's biting in and I'm getting wood chips coming out. And it's already engaged the wood and it's starting to drill into it. Now be prepared when you're drilling into something, when it does the breakthrough so that you don't slam yourself through or hurt yourself. As you start, like this here I know is an inch and a half piece. As I start getting into it, you see how it fell through like that? Always be prepared for that so you're not leaning on something pressing into it and then and then fall into it. So just so you understand when you're drilling into something, you don't want to, uh, that when you do break through, it's going to, there's no resistance there. The drill is just going to go through quickly then. Okay, so that's how, to, that's how to drill a hole in wood with just a normal bit. If you have to use, if you have to have a wider hole, they make a variety of bits out there. And I'm going to show you a couple of them real quick. This right here, this style here is referred to as a spade bit. It's got a small, sh a small shank on it, but a very wide head. These are uh, typically only used in, you could use them on plastic, but typically in a, in a wood application. Um, I do believe they have these that they can use in metal. I don't use these for that, though. I think they have them for metal. We're, for this demonstration, we're only focusing on bits that go uh, with wood. So basically what happens is your point will go in, and then... These outside teeth here will engage, and that's your cutting edge. And this would, this bit here would put an inch and an eighth hole into a piece of wood. A little tip I'm going to show you: if you're ever doing something like this, if you're working like in a uh, on cabinetry or any a kind of piece of wood, as you go into it, it'll do a clean cut. Up 
so I got a good shot here. This is a this is a big hole we're boring here. Now what I'm checking for there is where my bit head is. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this point right here is leading the cutting edge. And it's about almost a half inch ahead of the cutting edge. So that point has now pushed a hole through the other side, which is what I was trying to get to. If I just continued to drill through this way, what it would end up doing is when it broke through, it would splinter the wood. So if you're drilling on a project and you need both sides to have a clean hole, you want to drill from the one side all the way till your point breaks through. Then using your point, go back into that hole from this side. Do a slow start. Get your cut going. And what this will do is it gives you two clean holes on either side, neither one split. So that's a trick to remember, and that actually works it, on any kind of a drill bit. If you need a, a, a really clean hole on either side, you don't want to take the chance of splitting. I want you to drill from the one side, and once you know you're in deep enough, coming from the other side and do it that way. If you're doing a really, really big hole on a DIY project, you want to go to what they call a hole saw. And this is a larger style bit. This is a set I have here from Rigid, and it has a variety of hole saws in it. Basically what they do is they give you a universal center drill and you would take your hole saw and there's a thread on here and then there's a, a, the female threading in here and you basically would thread it in and you don't thread these up all the way tight. You thread them up kind of loose and this back part has two bars that are attached to this circular plate that turns it pushes against them. It's a, They're floating bars. I'm going to bring this up. Can you see that in the camera? Can you see inside the drill? Okay, as I turn these, what happens... Are you able to see this? Engage? Okay, what, what it's doing is it's pushing those two up there. And this allows, because when this turns, it's going to need a lot of force, a lot of torque behind it. So what this does is those two bars lock this bit head to the center, to the center drill. So this starts your hole. That's your starter bit. It would start your hole and get you in. So it's... it's, a, it's started you in and it's holding on the wood and on the other side you're holding it with the drill before this actual hole saw engages and cuts. These are used for large holes. This is used for putting like locks in a door. Um, you can use these for putting vents in a soffit. Um, a vari variety of applications are needed for something like this. This would be maybe for putting a hole for piping in a wall. Um, different sizes. So these are, for, and you can get these also that are just for wood or you can get them where they're good for wood and for metal. So there's a variety of bits to go with um, with your drill. Another topic I want to cover with these for using a drill from a beginner standpoint is you can also screw in screws with the drill. And to do that, you, you know, you have your old screwdrivers, your flathead screwdriver and your Phillips screwdriver. Well, they have the bits for those two that are made to go with drills. So they have the little quarter inch hex shank on here and that just sets in the drill bit or in the chuck, I'm sorry. And then we chuck it up. Now I can take, this is a three inch wood screw here, just take your Phillips head, put it in the screw head, and you set it in your wood surface. I'll lift this up. Now on something large like this, if it's wobbling on you, you can hold it. They give you a flat surface on the screw. Be careful, don't grab the screw part because when it starts turning, those, uh, those screw edges can be sharp and they can cut your finger. So. Another thing to be careful of is don't try and put too much pressure on this because if you slip, what happens is this um, Phillips head is going to stab you in the hand. And I've done this before and I've gotten it pretty good. I've been bleeding from it. Um, you, you, so you want to be very careful of that because you can really do some damage to your finger with that. That's a very sharp point. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of turn it slow and let that start to self-drill, self-engage. Now it's engaged itself into the wood. And then you just keep turning it to take it down. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm going to lower this torque setting here real quick. So you can see this. See, it's not even drilling now because the, the, the chuck has disengaged because I changed that torque setting. I increased the torque setting and now it drills. <laughs> just so you guys can see how that works. One other screw head and then to pull a screw out. Say you had a screw in the wood already. You just put it into the reverse position. 
set the Phillips head into the head. I always engage it first. Make sure that you're locked in. You can feel it kind of seat together before you start turning it. Because if you do that too early, what will happen is you'll strip the head of your screw out, meaning what you're going to round out all those edges. And then the, the screw head won't be able to engage the screw and back it out or drive it in. So we're going to do this. We're going to set it up. I've got it reverse. Just do a little turn, and this screw pops right out. So that's how you screw a screw in, take a screw out of wood. You're gonna, there's all different kinds of screw heads out there, and I don't have the time in the video to cover everything, but I want to show you just a couple of the main ones. Phillips has the main one. A flat head is going to be very hard to work with with a, with a drill. It bounces all over the place, so we're not going to cover that now. The other one I want to show you guys real quick is the hex, the, um, the quarter inch uh, hex screw here. They use these for like, I'm going to chuck this one up. Through this one. This one has like a, a regular hex head on it, and this is a quarter inch. They have all different sizes of these, uh, 5 16 quarter inch. This is a nut driver or nut runner, is what they call these, and you can get these in the different sizes too. When you buy one of these, buy the kind that has the magnetic tip to it. And the reason why I buy them like that is because of this. I can take a screw, set it in here, the magnet holds it in place. If you, they, they have these, you can buy them real cheap. And you're like, oh, wow, I got a whole set for two bucks. Anything you do, that screw is falling all over the place. And a lot of times when you're working with one of these, you're working with a shorter screw that you really can't get your finger in there and hold it to start it. So having that magnetic head on there is a big deal. Spend the extra money, get a magnetic head. The common sizes of these that I use is the quarter inch, the 5 16 and sometimes the 3 8 size. If you are just trying to get yourself something, if you're getting your drill and you want to have the common ones, get yourself a quarter inch and a 5 16 You can get a nice magnetic head for probably 253 bucks. So for 5 6 bucks, you'll have the two sizes that you need for this style. And you can see how easy this is. I'm going to set it up against the board. I've got it here, and it just zip right in. These are used very commonly on like hanging curtain rods. You'll see those uh, screw heads on a, on a lot of applications like that. So. Right now, just to recap real quick, we've covered screwing in a wood screw, removing a wood screw. We're doing that with a Phillips head. When you Now, there are different size Phillips head. The standard size is a number two. So that's the size of bit I would recommend you getting. You can also get the number one, which is a little bit smaller and a little bit more pointed. And um, that's definitely something else that I, I would have is the number one, number twos. When you put your Phillips head into your screw, you should feel it completely engage. If it feels like it's not seated in there or it's wobbly, you've probably got the wrong size Phillips and you need to get the correct size because with the wrong size, what's going to happen is it's probably going to just strip your screw head and then you're going to create problems that you didn't need. So I hope this helps you guys in understanding how to use a drill. If you have any questions or if I didn't explain something you felt I should have explained, please uh, send me a message or send me an email at my two cents on things at gmail.com and I'll be glad to respond to you and try and get an answer for you. Thanks for your time.